From the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner meetings for December 7th, 2022. The time is 6.30 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting, which is both uh, Zoom and, um, and the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical uh, problems interrupt the virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. Uh, for purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of South Deerfield Municipal Offices. The remote participation can be found on the town of Deerfield's website um, under the calendar section. You'll see a link for this meeting. There's a toll-free number if you'd like to call in, uh, which is 833-5480276. Uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 57. 0012. You'll also see a link for the Zoom. So you can click on that and uh, join by Zoom. So everybody should just meet the, mute their Zoom or landlines by star six, um, unless questions or question have questions or commenting. Um, and all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. I will call this meeting to order. Um, we can do public comment and then um we also have a hearing which i'll read in a couple seconds so just see if there's any public comment on the items on the agenda tonight and if there isn't i'll move right on to opening up the hearing you know i see chris over here hey chris yeah um i don't know if it's on the agenda but <clears throat> it's later on the agenda about the jubilee and so i just wanted to like create yeah. um context for that sure if i can uh, yeah, if you want to hang around, we can uh, I, we can allow that right now if you want, or if you want to hang around, we can we can invite you in after this. Uh, I'm going to hang for the whole meeting, no matter oh, what. Well, I'll call I'll call on you for that then. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Any other comments? None from the audience here. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, I'll read the hearing, and we'll open the hearing for the tax tax classification hearing, um, and I'll allow the assessors to open their meeting as well. The Town of Deerfield Select Board will hold a classification hearing on December 7th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. for the purposes of providing an open forum for the discussion of local property tax policy and whether all five classes of property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, personal, shall be taxed at the same rate or different rates. Information and data concerning the fiscal effect of the available alternatives is open to the public inspection in the municipal offices of 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., weekdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., and on the town's website at www.deerfieldma.us. Interested taxpayers may review the material and attend the hearing. Written or oral statements from interested taxpayers will be accepted and taken into consideration at the hearing. Written statements will also be accepted prior to the hearing. Meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. And all of the stuff that I read to open the meeting is the same. The phone number is the same. The meeting ID passcode and the, and the link is the same. So I'll call the uh, tax classification hearing open. And I welcome the Board of Assessors here to open their meeting if you haven't already. And, we already have. Oh, you so, have? Wonderful. Yeah. So welcome. Yeah. Introduce Thank yourselves you. to the public. and uh, Skip yeah. Sobieski, Board of Assessors. Yep. Chuck Shattuck, Board of Assessors. Uh, Frank Leone, Board of Assessors. Thank you. Welcome. So here we are. Another yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. Another year. Um, um, go ahead. So we this year we are recommending a rate of $14.97 as a single rate. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you know, you do have the option of um, splitting the rate and the residential rate could go as low as twelve dollars and fifty three cents, mm -hmm. um, which in turn would push the commercial rate to twenty two dollars and forty five cents. If you in you know right. kind of anywhere in between, anywhere those. in between, yeah, yeah. 
And a lot of a lot of times we look at this, and I think the belief has been since I've been on the board to continue with a single rate. We feel that we're very lucky to have the industrial and commercial um, businesses in town, and it really does help, you know, with the um, keeping the residential rates as low as we can. And it's great to have the participation and the jobs that come with that. Um, we're um, very we're very lucky, and um, I think the balance of our, our tax rate over time is because we've had, you know, the the business with mm -hmm. us and. There's no good reason to have a split rate, as far as I can tell, right. from many, many years um, of going to webinars and seeing, you know, seminars and all kinds of stuff, unless you're trying to nab somebody on the way out. Yeah. So, and that's not the case. No. We want all our businesses to stay, so. And we're getting new I'm, businesses I, all the time. I always, right, I support the single tax rate. Mm -hmm. Tim, do you have any comments? Um, yeah, I mean, basically, since I'm new to this process, I wanted to get some educational value mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. your appearance with us. Of course. So, uh, we'll try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I Hopefully, I'll be asking rudimentary questions. And some of this also is for the people in attendance if they want to understand. Maybe they already understand the process. But so um, when how much of this is controlled by state regulation and, um, you know, how much actual discretion does the board of assessors have when they recommend a rate uh the the rate is pretty much just a it's really just the math it, it all in in just for um just for comparison with last year's rate last year's rate was 15 dollars and 17 cents so the rate is going down 20 cents per thousand however um the average single family house the assessment Last year was three hundred forty thousand four fifty nine. Yep. Um, for this year, it's three fifty nine six sixty one. So, the average uh, single family home will see an increase of roughly about four percent in their tax bill. Four percent. Yeah. Yep. Now, can you um, can you also then explain? Does does every piece of property get? Um, valuation increase in a typical year or for instance if we had an economic downturn um and the valuations decreased or, yeah, so or, it's or is, by sales of certain types of yeah. houses and certain neighborhoods and there's a lot that goes into it um mm -hmm. age of the house style and i believe the sales for correct me if i'm wrong but i think the sales that were used for this fiscal year started I think we went back to January of 2021 to mm -hmm. July 1st of 2022 and the sales that happened in that period. So is that an 18-month um, period? Roughly? Are the ones that, you know, were used to um, COVID value to come up with the, the current valuations. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So um, so it, it sort of uh, would take a, a, an economic downturn of a couple of years where Right, it does lag behind fall. a little bit. Yeah, right. So the probably next year the assessments will even be a little bit higher because mm -hmm. you know, yeah, would be my guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, unless something, yeah. yeah. So, okay, well, that's very good to know. Um, and then what we what we are allowed to increase our levy by every year is determined also by the state. Is that right? Yes. yes. So, and that's yeah. what people often refer to as proposition two and a half two and a half and then a lot of yeah um of course the debt exclusions um which i think still are i don't know the highway garage there's a few of them that are still on the yeah. the, the school roof the roof school. and then with and the other the sewer. on the sewer yeah yep. obviously 25 percent um, of the sewer yeah yeah mm -hmm. so those add you know so i think we were talking earlier i think the tax levy is about almost five percent higher than mm -hmm. yeah 4.7 i did a calculation right. yeah yeah so okay yeah and um i think that's more or less what i was interested in finding out so um <clears throat> and we were having i guess a question about where do we find new growth in all of this uh so for instance like sugarloaf estates um 
are they fully now integrated into the tax uh, rolls or or they're still yeah, some house? I mean, there's probably a six or more that were just right. being finished up. So there'll be a little, but there won't be much left there. Didn't right. That, can I ask? I'm sorry. Can yeah, I ask of course something? you can. Um, didn't, doesn't that get incorporated in the, in the gateway system, which is the yes. state calculation system? Yep. And it yep. gets adjusted between the revenue and yeah. what the growth comes, what? Yeah, the new growth allows what, us to, uh, you know, some more levy, right? Right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And without, they have to without, balance it with the revenues, which I know Karen and, and Brenda were working on last I, week. They've had a, a couple, I found out at the senior housing meeting last night that they've had a couple already units resold. Yes. The original ones. Oh, yeah. And they're almost 500,000. For a lot, higher. For a lot yeah. higher. Yeah. It's, well, <laughs> she told me that. Really, I believe it. You yeah. know, our, I know. Our community is, you know, it's re, I mean, it's hard for a starter family to come and build a house and live in Deerfield. There's no doubt about that. It's a very expensive town to live in, but um, people's values are really holding their own. And with, with COVID, I mean, just, I look at the real estate all across Western Mass and the amount of um, people that left the cities came to the rural areas and bought, um, bought houses sight unseen for mm -hmm. 50,000 over, it drove everybody's prices up. Right. So we're seeing definitely a bubble of, of um, prices on homes that are affecting you know, your rates and, and all of that and how much things are valued. So it probably will level off in the next few years, but there's still another year of, I mean, it's strong growth right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of residential yeah. work going on. But so. in the end, it's really, you know, what's being spent like the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the valuation or the tax rate, it really, it's just math you, to get to the, the budget. You've yeah, got a budget that you right. got to spend. It's, it's yeah. Really all it you got to cover so. your expenses and, yeah. and that's what it is. Yep. Yeah. So our main job is just trying to make sure that everybody is fairly assessed. Correct. Which, you know, we do our best. And then yep. if people aren't happy or if they have questions, they can always ask us questions or, you know, file them for an abatement or. Yep. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> you're assisted in this by professional appraisers and so Patriot forth. Properties. Those are, yep. those the... And they're, they're the, their work is distributed to you, we can get to it through our town website, right? So when I go on yep, and yes. look up my my particular residential home, that's the uh, that's the company's uh, data. That, that's right. You can get more detailed data by contacting Karen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think. Am I wrong? I think the, the the cards aren't published. You can access them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You you can get the footprint of the building and, and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, the general, A lot yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 That's great. And then find my final question is just um, a lot of people are have been expressing concern about um, seniors on fixed income. Um, what sort of programs are available to them for seeking abatements or is there a standard standard sort of thing that's offered to seniors? There's exemptions based on income and assets. Mm -hmm. um, I think up to what's up to a thousand dollars is the. Oh, the limit of the exemption itself. Yeah. Um, I think I'll have to confirm, but that's, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there are certain limits, you know, it's based on income and assets. Mm -hmm. um, right. But there are. You could be land rich and, as, and, and you know, income poor, and that would factor into whether you could get the full exemption or a part of an exemption. Right. Part. And the, uh, the CPA tax, which is tacked on, is mm -hmm. those limits are a little bit higher. So more people would qualify for that percentage and that's an automatic thing right uh, it's not automatic no i, th I thought the first hundred thousand or something oh, was that's exempted automatic. yeah for every in other words the oh, first oh, right, right, yes yeah, yeah. so like sure. if you have a million dollar home and the first hundred thousand is exempted then you don't get a huge exemption but if you're we've got a hundred fifty thousand dollar home does any such home exist in deerfield probably not. then then you you would be paying on a fifty thousand dollar so um if, if i think I think that's the correct. Yeah, that number. sounds right. Yeah, but. no, that is correct. Yeah, I, I, I do believe that there is you can get exempted from that as well. You, yes. you just yeah. have to go through the process. Mm -hmm. It's not automatic. It's a pretty simple process, and mm -hmm. Karen is great helping yep. people in the office. So. Okay. Yeah. So any questions? Uh, I think that's. I'm going to open it up to the public if there's mm -hmm. any. Yeah. No. Yeah. Public. Any, any public want to have any comment on their tax rate? Because I. I definitely hear about it all the time on social media, <laughs> but if anyone would like to uh, have a comment about how we set it and why we set it and what it needs to be, 
Now's the time. I don't see anything. Let's just move hey, on. Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm curious. When will the tax bills come out? Great question. Christmas. We, we are <laughs> yeah, just People about in time for Christmas. Christmas. I know. Yeah, of course. Really nervous and working hard to try and get everything done. It's the matter of setting the rate. Right. Um, and then I think, I don't know if all the districts have done theirs or they're do they do it after. They're doing it after. And then, so it'll be right around the, just before the first of the year, just before Christmas. And Which then we apologize profusely for, but. <laughs> we have one, one staff member at the moment and then all hands the on deck and yeah. stuff in the envelope. So, um, and also uh, people might be wondering about their sewer bill. We've been waiting for the water department to finish up their work and send us that data so we can create the bills and send them on. Fingers are crossed. We're hoping Friday, Monday. So they, they're they behind, and that's why we're behind. So we're just waiting for that data as soon as we have it again. And unfortunately, it's all going to land at the same time on Sarah. So please bear with us. We're doing everything right. we we're, can. We're going to do whatever we're we can help, to help her a ton her. to get stuff out to you because we know it's important to try and get this stuff out before the end of the year for people. So that's that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Um, any other questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. A second. Um, I had one or, other question. Oh, then, oh, so, then so let's scam. wait. I just wanted to understand from the perspective of uh, the assessors, our authority as, as sewer select board members is to just approve the classification or um, if, if we wanted to do something like split a split rate, we can. Um, yes. can you just talk me through that a little bit? Um, I noticed that uh, you have various categories of property and, and then you you assess maybe commercial and industrial a higher rate and so you can lower the 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 uh, residential rate. Is that how that works? If we were going to do we that. wanted to do a split yeah. rate. This is purely hypothetical. Yeah, the, um, the residential rate you could reduce down to 1253. Per thousand, yeah, and that would increase. Yeah, but it would increase the commercial up to twenty two forty five, mm -hmm. and yeah. then really anywhere in between that fourteen ninety seven and twelve fifty three, you could, yeah, really choose pick any. any number there. So it could be a, a very small variation. It could be, or more typically, I I see towns do uh, one one point two five or something like that, where, uh, or if they're in really bad shape, uh, they do something drastic and. Mm -hmm. try to really get industry to pay a lot of the taxes, mm -hmm. um, which probably is counterproductive in the long term. But yep, I think um, so. Tim, yeah. everything that from uh, has not changed in all the years that I've been doing this. Right. There's not been any information that says that it's not counterproductive. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it counterproductive to economic development. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have to keep our businesses. Oh yeah. Or just uh, yep. Ed education. education for people to, <laughs> know. to know, how, know how it works That's... and what we'd want to do. And the agricultural land would fall into that commercial. I mean, even though they do, you know, get a good break with a 61A, it does fall right. into the commercial. So their farmers category. would spend more. Right. So yeah. farmers would spend more. Yep. And, and yeah. the reason why we have good balance is because we have residential open space farming agriculture and then your commercial industrial. Yeah, we have about 75.4% is residential property the, mm -hmm. of the values. And then the, there is, um, I think there's a commercial is about 8.7% and industrial is about 96 And then personal property is around 6.3%. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a good healthy mix, I think. Yeah. Um, we are a bedroom community for sure. And um, so it tends to lean more towards residential, but we do have great businesses in town and we want to keep them and grow them and get right. more more businesses which we're getting all the time it's really great we have pretty good growth yeah yeah that strong business. very happy about we that don't have empty storefront. and no. i know um maybe none of us are old enough to remember this but um at some special or some town meetings we we hear about um you know the the percentage of commercial being much higher in the olden days um is that a factor of in the olden days there were five businesses and there were a hundred houses and now there's a thousand houses and it's the same five businesses or is there something at work here that we should be aware of and if you have no opinion you can say i don't know yeah, I, I, yeah we did have a lot of um 
you had more or a tool and we had a lot of plastics you had a lot of industrial plastics. Plastics. Lots of businesses probably add up yeah quicker than the yeah. right you know, the the higher. and those things yeah. with those businesses moved, moved out, out. Yeah. we've gotten other businesses but they yeah. don't run the same way and they're not necessarily industrial right isn't that why we middle. changed the dedic um the dedic land parameter to the retail. Town meeting yeah yeah retail and commercial I okay. think instead of just industrial over there. Because the economic sense. conditions yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. And yep. Okay. Well, all right. That's basically so we had a motion Thanks. to close. And do you have a second? I'll second. All right. Any further discussions? All those in favor of closing the hearing? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I'll entertain a motion to um set the single tax rate at fourteen ninety-seven per thousand. I will make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. all your work. Yeah, you're welcome. And doing this. Thank and Thank you. And Nick? I believe you, you three, I believe, have yes. to sign. Is it the LA5? Um, yes, LA5, the LA5, right? Through Gateway, you need yep. to log in. And, yep. So yeah, I made them that. bring their I, computers so they could do that. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can't I can't have done do <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I would request maybe next time, um, I know it's hard every year because we're waiting on so many different parts and pieces, and I don't know how to light a fire next year to try and get it a little sooner. I know, we tried. Like, I know you do. With Patriot there. I wonder if we was... can light a fire under them next year to somehow get and them to start I was talking earlier. to Casey a month or two ago about yeah. entertaining um, going Quarterly, whatever you call it. Because yeah. right now it's semi annually. Yeah. But You're right. Right. We, do every... flow. we went to quarterly payments. We talked this through with Sarah too after I yep. talked to you. Yeah. Um, your quarterly payments keep your cla your cash flow pretty consistent. Right. Um, the town's never wanted to do quarterly, but and I think part of that fear is just how much work it's going to be. It but is. In Ashfield, it's not necessarily as much as you think. Yeah. Because in Ashfield, we did two mailings. Um, the pre-tax rate bills went out, I forget when we sent them out, but it was two bills. And then the second, basically after, I want to say it was after January, we would do the second round and that had the set rate. Right. Um, and it, it was the same two mailings. It's just, you had additional bills. Like okay. you had two bills as opposed to just one. Huh. So the later bills would make up for any change. Exactly. And they were due at a later date. Is that the idea? Yes. They were due yes, different they, times. They're due yeah. in, in a similar fashion. It's just over a quarter as opposed to semi-annual, which is- And it was a level out of cash flow, certainly. Exactly. Us, as, we, as we do work. So it's a thought. It is a thought. Yeah, it is should, a thought. We should think about that over the year and see what we I can come I think it would with. help our cash. Uh, there have been times that we've had cash flow little problems before. Oh, yeah. Before. It's close. And yeah. once yeah. we sort of explained what that looked like to Sarah- yeah. Um, I think it was much less um, scary. overwhelming. Yeah, much <laughs> yeah. less scary because, and, yeah. and if she needed help with that, I know the collector yeah. in Ashfield would come yeah, down and walk her help. through it. Um, okay. Because that might be a great way to sort of adjust. I don't know how the public would feel about that, but I, it does allow you to know exactly when your bills are ready. And I just want to try and get it so we're not doing them all at Christmas with the sewer Absolutely. and all and any, that's anything what we, were we can do to get it earlier. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we have stuff we have to do too. And just, you know, whatever can be done would be great to try and focus on that. Now, next I don't year know what that can. process is, but I can I see it. Either. We but, can figure out how yeah. we might yeah. be able to change that. Just yeah. so we can look into the process. Just to see what it would yeah. Yeah. Like. So yeah. I think I think we need to at least ask people how they feel. And that's fine yeah. i just want to get whatever we do just yeah. sooner so it's not oh I know. right so maybe that's just the way to go. Stress. the other thing about having a quarterly tax tax um payment is that you don't come out of christmas and get a full half year right real estate tax bill right. so you've right. already um, had a chance to pay one quarter yeah. right um and so it spreads it a little more for so folks. it mm -hmm. might make it a little easier to manage in budgets i'm not sure yeah that's um, a but, good thought and people with escrows with their mortgage it helps that Right. Kind of smooth yeah. that out too. Cause a right. lot of times you, if you get the, you know, sometimes semi annually, you get three bills in one year. Mm -hmm. And now they ask, you know, now you're, now they're hammering your payment. escrow account. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. Okay. You may not be able to answer this question, but before we let you go, I'm just curious because, um, again, I'm new to this process. Um, so a business like uh, New Pro comes to town and 
they start a project in calendar year 2022. Oh, shit. They 75% finished in 2023, and then they're fully complete in 2024. Um, what happens to their their tax payment? What are they what are they assessed on? And and is it like once the final thing is done, is that final thing split over two years? Because they, uh, my understanding, it's very limited in in these commercial situations that the valuation might get finalized over a two year period. I I was reading about a project in Bernardston, and that's where this came up. Uh, do you know anything about that? Or well, I mean, they will get a a bill based on. They own the What's property. Value finished, the yeah, yeah. right? You know, as of a certain date. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever percentage of completed, like a house, they go, yeah. you know, right, wherever they are in that in the construction of the house, they will get. Like, yeah. So, so like in New Pro's case, I think they closed on the property two or three months ago. Yeah. yeah. And so they've owned the property for a portion of the year. They've poured some cement. That has it was a certain, after July first. It was right? after July first, yeah. so right. so technically we, according we to know. your records, it doesn't yeah. transition until January. So January first, yeah. Okay, so they own it beginning next year, right? For for this yeah. is why I'm yeah. For tax yeah. purposes. And so the work they've done this year would be reflected next year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. This is becoming clearer. Yeah. And then uh, if they're really fortunate and they move ahead really well and they get three quarters complete does does patriot go out and, and assess what the, the yes. value of the construction is by the end of the year yes. and that reflected in the next year correct okay yeah. excellent thank you yeah. thank you All good right. education really good to see you guys thank yeah, you nice so much for your work nice holiday season yes thank you to see healthy, you guys healthy yes. holidays enjoy your families <laughs> bye-bye thanks um, well, okay. let's, do, do you want to, um, we I have no appearances, any select board reports or announcements? Well, uh, let's or just. Or do we want to just bring in Chris, Chris and just, get this Chris, done? Yeah. yeah. And really that's our one day Jubilee. That's the one day liquor license for the okay. Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, we have a one day liquor license for the Jubilee. And I think there's an invitation or something. Oh no, that's something else for the thing. So, um, yeah, we have a one day uh, for the first event of the Deerfield 350th anniversary year celebrations of celebrations, Deerfield Academy Dining Hall. This will be um, December 31st um, and expires January 1st. Um, I will make a motion to approve the request and also a waiver of yes, the fees uh, waived. Fee. Yep. And I'll second that. All right. Any further discussions? Everything looks in order. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, pass that around. And then, that was quick, um, Chris. Yeah, Chris, do you want to? Did you want to hit on anything on that? Yeah. So <clears throat> the liability insurance policy issue be before the end of the week. Um, it's already posted to our account, the charge. So the policy will be generated in the next two days for right. the insurance side of it. And we'll get that to, to Casey and the staff there. Okay. Um, so, I think, Chris, um, you wanted to make sure that we um, let people know that there were still some tickets available. Oh, yeah. That's the more important thing is, of course, we have to do all the administrative stuff. But I just want people to understand what this event is. Um, it's uh, kind of the kickoff to a months long uh, series of activities. Um, and the Friends of Deerfield, which is a nonprofit, this is kind of focused on raising funds and supporting civic um, events like this, where our focus is on the 350th anniversary for the next year. Um, and, uh, and so we're doing a great job to try to get involvement from individuals and businesses and institutions and private schools, et cetera. And everyone is stepping up the plate. I want to reassure people that. Um, and um, so this is the first major event on New Year's Eve. It starts at 6 p.m. It'll go to about 1230 to 1 a.m. after the New Year's is rung in. Um, so it's a, it's a dinner dance uh, format and there's tickets available. And um, 
the tickets are um, $100 for a single, $180 for, for two, a pair of tickets, or $720 for a table. Um, and um, and it's and it'll be an event that involves live music also, um, and a fully catered uh, meal, and then um, and then there'll be some backdrop things like uh, kind of raffle baskets for theme baskets and things like that. Um, that I actually think will be pretty impressive based on what I've heard. So um, I think it'll be a good evening, and um, it's all coming together well, and so. Uh, so yeah, we kind of need, we're in the crunch point now in the next week or two, where we need to finalize, you know, the seating plans and everything and get people to, 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 to go for their tickets. Yeah. And, um, and that's the key thing. Um, so, so where do you go for tickets? Well, we've got a website, www.friendsofdeerfield.org. You click on events on friendsofdeerfield.org, and then click on events. The Jubilee dinner dance will come up first and foremost, and then you can you can actually buy the tickets online, and we'll get them to you in person or in mail. Um, the you. other thing is you could call um, direct to Stan Adams, who's another board member of the Friends of Deerfield, um, and his phone number is four one three six six five four eight five eight. And he can generate tickets without going online and take checks and take cash and make sure you're all taken care of. But again, Stan Adams' phone number is 413-665-4858. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great event. Really, please grab your tickets, come and celebrate the first of Deerfield's 350th. Yes. Yeah, we're uh, we're pushing 200 tickets at this point, 200 seats. Um but our goal is really 225 to 250. Yep. That'd be great. I, I just to let you know, Chris, I have not heard any more uh about the fireworks. Um as far as I know, the only thing that hasn't been signed off on is the conservationist person. And I have not heard any more. So yeah, and, and um, from my side, um, I actually had calls with Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife today, and they're doing some more follow-up work just to answer some questions in anticipation of questions that the Department of Conservation and Recreation might have. Oh, so cool. so we're, we're continuing to work on multiple okay. fronts, and around the Thanksgiving holiday, a few things got delayed, but we're, we're okay. We're getting the information. Okay. Well, I, I know we have plenty of time, but I, I still would want to make sure that we're committed to putting fireworks off of Sugarloaf if we have any opportunity to do that. Yeah, absolutely. There's also a thing in our in our mail, I think. Um, I'll just read this from the Friends of Deerfield, I think. It's or the Parade Parade Working Group. Parade Work parade Group. Work group. Um, so greetings to Town of Deerfield and the 350th Parade Work Group will would be honored to have your participation in in our parade and downtown celebration to be held Saturday, June 10th, 2023. We encourage all local organizations and causes to sponsor parade participants. We are looking for a variety of en entrants, uh, including but not limited to bands, floats, motorized vehicles, walking units, and dance groups. The parade and uh, the parade as a centerpiece of Deerfield's 350th celebration is a great way to showcase your organization or cause and to be remembered as part of the legacy of Deerfield. Timing and the route, it's a 1.4 mile parade, will begin at 2 p.m. and is expected to conclude around 4 p.m. Staging will be at the South Deerfield Water Department and Mass DOT out on five and 10, uh, or actually 116. And all participants must uh, be at their assigned staging areas by 1 p.m. The parade will march up Sugarloaf Street to Park Street, then continue north on Main Street, North Main Street, and disband at the Frontier Regional Parking Lot. If you're interested, please email deerfield350thparade at gmail.com by February 15th, 2023, to receive a participant workbook uh, paperwork, which must be signed and returned via email, mail, or fax. Um, so there's contact stuff there as well to reach out to everybody. So um, we'll get this up on the webpage and share it around. So exciting. I cannot believe like we started talking about this three or four years ago, and it's mind-blowing that we're like weeks away from the beginning so I, I can't thank um you know chris harris and all the people that have come together to help you know 
their love of Deerfield and pull this together. It's going to be really fun. So, yep. Anything else? Yeah, I don't know if you can see the Deerfield sign up behind yeah, me. I ask you, why is it light outside, Chris? Yeah, I was going to say. Because I'm in Texas, El Paso, That's Texas. <laughs> so I'm two hours behind you, but there is a Deerfield sign everywhere I go. I did That's see it. Is yeah. Up in wherever I live. Thanks for representing. <laughs> it's great. Yep. Okay. So thank you very much, Chris. Um, okay. We don't have minutes. And we'll, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. Looking forward Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you have, have any minutes. select board announcements or board of health announcements you wanted to hit on today at all? Anything? Uh, just from a board of health point of view, it's, it's, you know, there's still a lot of COVID. Yes. Uh, it's steady. It, it's not crazy by any means, but um, the flu, there's a lot more flu cases than we're ever had oh yeah this early and last year an rsv <laughs> um so if you haven't had your flu shot please get your flu shot might really everyone is saying this is the worst flu year since 2009 it is and so and uh we really it, it's going to be long long yeah and it's already interrupted you know things that we really enjoy the santa's workshop this uh, this coming weekend has been canceled because of illness. Um, so I just want to make sure that people are aware of that that that's that has been canceled this year because uh, because of an illness. And um, I wanted to hit on a couple other um, things around that because again because of illness, there's been a change in the seventh and ninth grade um, assessments for basketball. I think it is um, that we're supposed to be tomorrow night. That's going to be moved to Monday at 7 p.m. at the Sundowan Elementary School. So again, um, Santa's you know, workshop is canceled for Saturday and 7 to 9 p.m. Um, tomorrow's, uh, I mean, excuse me, 7th to 9th grade assessments for basketball is moved to Monday night, 7 p.m. at the Sunderland Elementary School. Um, just wanted to remind people to light up the night holiday decorating contest um, sponsored by the Deerfield Rec Department. Um, uh, you can find this stuff on their Facebook page or here, but um, entry forms must be received by December 12th. Um, judging will be held December 15th and 17th. Um, lights must be on from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And there's all kinds of, you know, little gift cards and stuff to win um, and several different categories. So light up the front of your house and it's really looking good around town. If you drive around, it looks, looks really great. Perky. I saw the Clark brothers out there putting up the last uh, decoration on the pole out in front of town hall or just down the road a bit. So um, I can't thank them enough for, for really bringing cheer to the, to the showing town. us how to do it. Yep. And uh, also Deerfield donates the two uh, toy and food drive. I'm seeing a pile of toys out here and stuff. So please continue to do that. This has been another difficult year for many households in Franklin County. Let's join in the holiday spirit and help those in need. New unwrapped toys for children of all ages will be donated to True Christmas. Food donations will go to the Franklin Area Survival Center. Um, please bring in donations for uh, toys and food can be left off right at the front uh, front hallway there at Deerfield Town Hall entryway. Um, you'll see the boxes there. Um, and then you, if you don't want to shop, uh, gift, gift certificate donations to area stores, um, maybe put in envelopes and, and address to the rec department and put in the drop box. Um, you can reach out to the rec department um, or call 1413-665-1400 and ask for the rec department. And um, please come and do that. So that's all of the stuff there. So oh, go ahead. I got a couple of things. I, yeah, please. While Chris is still on, I wanted to, um, having labored with them mightily to get the Friends of Deerfield to organized and uh, approved as this 501c3. I want to thank Chris in particular for um, picking up the treasury responsibilities and uh, and also Stan Adams because they're they're working like crazy to make this jubilee a, a success. Mm. And uh, so I just want to recognize their efforts. Thank you. And then I'd also like to thank um, Denise Mason and Casey uh, Warren yeah. for their work on and Alice. Uh, don't forget Alice. And Alice, yes. Um, well, yeah. And uh, for <laughs> for um, a community compact grant that's going to bring uh, $75,000 to the town for um, feasibility studies related to a possible, uh, you know, temporary uh, 
house for the senior center. So right. Um, Great. So I just wanted to thank Denise and actually and uh, one more thing, Kim. There was a hundred thousand dollar. We just got news a hundred thousand dollar. No, grant. we got news they could get it. I didn't oh. send any. I messed up. Oh, I didn't send right. the email out. I right, thought we so. had got. No, it's okay. I thought we did too. They corrected <laughs> me. Sorry. That's okay. But we have an opportunity. The library has an opportunity to pursue a mass historical grant. And actually, they pointed out to me. The guy from the grant program pointed out that to me that we might possibly be able to try for the congregational church and the 1888 building in okay. the same amount. So it's something that Denise and I are going to talk to Alice. And that's about. like a hundred thousand dollar grant. Yeah. Right. The hundred thousand dollar per building. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And which is which is not okay, well it's not you know, chump change. Let's put it that way. Yeah. If but we get every penny two or, two or three hundred thousand, I mean come yeah, on. Yeah, no, that's good. And uh, the 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 trade off is of course then you become an officially registered historic building, correct? Which brings with mm. itself. So maybe that's a way to get the town to do maintenance. Yeah, it it brings some requirements <laughs> from MHC. Does, yeah. Yes, but to do that. some of those requirements are not uh, onerous. onerous. Yeah. And, and, and that's what we to... did with their old town hall. Yeah, people need to understand that. Yeah, you have to look at that. Oh, hi, David. Well, um. Uh, so I had just noticed in the kitchen, there were these really cute thank yes. you notes. And these are, I think, from the kids at uh, Bement School. Mm -hmm. I saw Dear Community Friends, um, we want to thank you for the many ways you support our community. Your work uh, behind the scenes helps to keep our community safe and strong. We hope the sweet treats bring smiles. Yes, so they left us a few. They left Those us were all gone. Of course <laughs> they are. <laughs> Your friends, the Bement School, and all the kids signed it. And um, it was another nice thank you note um, from Noel. And thank you for the trees, the food, and the grass. There so, you go. And thank you for everything. So that was really cute. I just wanted to kind of mention that. So so it's nice That's to get that nice. to get those things. So that that was really good. Um, we ate everything though. Sorry. That's okay. We got to be fast around here. Um, so do you, do you want to do the, um, the, we can do the approval of the alcohol license renewals yep. and then we have one other item to hit. And I, I want to make sure that we do the gate, the gateway here. Yes. Because yeah, we can I don't want to be that. responsible for doing that. <laughs> yeah. We can do that before we go oh, for sure. I can go grab in case. Box. So we, there is, needs technology. We can help with that. Support. No problem. And did we, um, with the, yeah, there are a lot of these approvals. There's, uh, there's several. Yeah. Um, and we did, gotta sign them all. Did we want to, uh, we had a recent incident or a recent occasion when we had to uh, re retroactively approve a, a, a variance from a permit so that the, uh, every four year, the U S men's team was playing at 10 o'clock in the morning Yeah, and, um, Treehouse has limited, uh, opening hours and closing hours. So, did we want to look when we get to that one? Can we look at whether we any adjustment yeah, is warranted? I, I yes, that. and I think, <laughs> but I think they had to, if they want to adjust it, they have to go to the ABA. I, I wrote it in my book. We need to change that. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, the, I thought the, the CBA yeah. set those restrictions yeah. because yeah. they're they're actually oh. more limited than what the uh, the ABCC allows. Huh. So well, we'll talk about <clears> that then. Yeah. Because I thought, yeah. So when we get to that, we can bring that up for sure. <clears throat> so we have um first we have this is all alcohol on premise, which is um the first one we'll start with is the Deerfield Inn. Um I'll entertain a motion to approve that with your license. You know what? I I think Trevor, if you read through them, we yeah. could do them as a group. You want to do them as a group? Yeah. Well I'll do them in sections as a group then. So well this that's is what all, I meant. It all, just, okay. The, you know, all alcohol on premise. premise. We have the Deerfield Inn, Gianni Figs Restaurant LLC, Hotel Warren, Leo's Table, uh, Magic Wings Corp, uh, PHB Yankee LLC, which is the um, Powder Hollow Brewery, Tavern Sports Bar, The Walk, Wolfie's Restaurant. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the the all alcohol on premises license. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. This is the All Alcohol On Premise Club, the Polish American Citizens Club. I will make a motion to support the renewal of the Polish American Citizens Club. And I will Club. second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. The All Alcohol Off Premises, which is the Deerfield Spirit Shop, 
and Purple Metal Ventures DBA Deerfield River Liquors. I will make a motion to approve the all alcohol off premises group. Yep. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then the Walt, uh, let's see, the wine and malt off premise, which would be uh, Cheslick's Market LLC, Circle K, Massachusetts DBA Circle K, Deerfield Convenience Store, and Kapoor Mobile Mart Inc., DBA Conway Road Neighbors. Um, I will uh, make a motion to approve the wine and malt off premises group. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. And now we get to the Farmer Brewers Pouring On Permit uh, premise, which is the Berkshire Brewing Company, Treehouse Brewing Company, Farmers Distillers per uh, Pouring Permit, Treehouse Brewing Com Company, uh, Farmer Series Pouring Permit, um, and then the Treehouse Brewing Company, Farmer Winery Pouring Permit. I make a motion we approve the farmer brewery pouring permit on premises group. Okay. Um, and now, we'll, we have a second. Uh, yeah, I just want to I just want to discuss um, yep. can we approve BBC and then talk about Treehouse? Yes. Yeah. Yep, so let's make a motion to approve Berkshire Brewing Company farmer brewers pouring permit on premise. I will make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. So we have Treehouse Brewing Company. We need a, a motion. Well, I will make that motion to approve. There. Well, second, second for discussion. What, yeah, what I want. Yeah, okay. So I'll second it for and for discussion. We'll discuss. Yeah, okay. okay. Now we can discuss. Now I get it. Good. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, <clears throat> Carolyn, I think that the situation is that when this when this was uh, newly approved, um, there was some some hours that were sort of fewer than the estate allows. Is that right? I mean, um, opening hours and closing hours. Yeah. Yeah. There weren't, there weren't as many as, um, I mean, we didn't go to the maximum hours. Right. And, and, but my understanding was that it was, wasn't because there wasn't a request for being open at certain times. It was that there were um, actually the ZBA decided to, impose a different set of hours than were were requested and now that we've seen treehouse in action for a year and we know how they operate they unlike a bar they don't allow you to have more than two two alcoholic beverages when you visit right so they're very good citizens so mm -hmm. my question is does it make sense to um <clears throat> adjust uh you know the the hours to be more in sync with what's permitted by the state rules and um i mean maybe there's no case to do that it's well, not that they've requested it but they did recently request a variance because they they didn't have the ability to be open within the normal period that the abcc allows businesses like that to be open so uh, what are your thoughts well my only thing is that i I'm not, I'm all for that completely. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me. I, um, I don't know if we have to um, petition the ZBA or they need to petition the ZBA no, or they, uh, what I, I believe the process is they have to, as a group vote, their board needs to vote whoever. The ZBA does? No. Yeah, no, the treehouse tree board house and board request it. That, that, and then they request it and send it to us. Yeah, they submit a change of hours application. Okay. But yeah, if it's it, in the ZBA the hours, permit, that's a different thing. Because the hours aren't in this. No. Yeah. This is just approving the license right. and the renewal, but they can go through the process through right. either. We check with the ZBA and see if there's restrictions on that. Well, that's the question. That. If, it's a, if it's a condition of the ZBA permit, to... we need to do some research. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, was it, what, I've gotten the details of this, but the, yeah. the permit was back that was to allow them to open right and um so i have no objection to them having to go through the zba but at some point it seems like that may may or may not apply yeah, any i think they didn't care at the time too because they, they were like oh we're not really sure what we're doing yet yeah. and now now that they've had the year to yeah. kind of figure this out and make yeah. sense to come back and i think they were open to changing it if, yeah. if right. it was a request so yeah. my so, question is is can a zba permit dictate statutory 
requirements. That's what I mean about research. Yeah. Because yeah. the statutory okay. allowances in ABCC hours are different. Right. Um, and actually, Chris researched that the other day. Okay. Um, so he, between Pat and him, they've they've given us a path to make the change in hours from yeah. the ABCC level. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have to look at that special permit and see what it says. Okay. <clears throat> it, it depends on what it actually says. You might yeah. say that, you know, temporarily that was... Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not permanent. I don't know. Yeah, but that's that's fine. I mean, whatever the path is, and it, yeah. it just seems like next year, I, I assume that Treehouse is going to actually function as a normal business, and they're going to be doing a lot more outdoor. They're yeah. going to be doing a lot more indoor concerts. Yeah. So yeah. we want to be able to give them, that you know, flexibility. the the flexibility to operate their business in a way that's going to make them be long term residents of the town. I mean, they are obviously they're. Their parking lot's full a lot of the time, so that's a good thing. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe we need to talk to the owners and just Let's see if that. if yeah. they they I want. I know there's need interest some because I you know I, that was it was through me they made the request. So I um I know there's interest. So we just have to figure out the process. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and have them you pursue know, it. Request. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Because I think it has to be a formal request to us, and then we I can think so, vote too. it. Yeah. Okay. It, it is have to have their their board. Chris, did you have something? Yeah. Yes, I was just going to add. Uh, it is a very simple process to go through the ABCC. It's probably actually the simplest transaction that they do. Um, right. Right. There's no two hundred dollar fee the way that there is with a lot of ABCC yeah. applications. They have to submit. All they need to do is essentially uh, sign a corporate board vote of whoever yeah. that is for their organization which i would just assume is the leadership of it um and then it just gets put through the local licensing authority so you guys and then sent to the abcc it should be on a pretty short timeline i think okay so okay. this is another educational thing for me typically yep. is the select board the, the the agency that approves operating hours for businesses like this or is it uh the local licensing authority has to approve it and then they send it to the abcc Right. Yeah. But are we the local licensing? Yes. yes. The so the local for, that's why I'm saying I don't really see a component of ZBA being involved in this, but but we should research that yeah. just to make sure. Because I just got a text from one of the members. It was um, something about. He didn't say ZBA didn't restrict hours on pouring. So oh, I'll maybe check. it was just operation. Or it something might like be. That. So we'll have to look. I'll look at yeah, it. Yeah, we'll look into that. Yeah. Sounds good. Good. Good topic. Good discussion. All those in favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nassau. Great. So we'll go and like we're signing those the Seinfeld episode where you get they're signing the one cent checks. Mm. Yeah. Right. We'll get those done. Yes. It takes longer <laughs> to actually sign all the documents than it did to take the votes. Great. Um, does somebody want to talk about the um the let's see, the we have a that's tax classification. There's something with the Fisk property right the, the yes. APR or whatever so I was contacted by APR the APR program um this is this has multi layers and NRCS is involved along with the state there's a particular vote that needs to happen from the board and the reason it's an item unanticipated is because we don't know well I didn't find out until Tuesday but we don't know when this vote request is going to be necessary. And so the vote request is that the select board authorize a signatory to sign off on the paperwork when we get it back. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually an NRCS request. So the board has to take a vote um, to approve probably Trevor to sign. Um, and then Did you sign it. I think so. Yeah. Did we authorize you because yeah. you're going to get I the paperwork. So. We'll get yeah. the, I'll get the paperwork first, but um, the authorized signatory it needs to be in place before they ask. So it's up to you Correct. guys who you no, want to make as an authorized signatory. I'm in Switzerland on signature. that. I, I would make motion that you would be authorized to sign for us and that we approve this. And I'd second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I, I know that they're really backed up on yeah. the state level, so. Yeah, no sense of um, holding it up. But. Um, they're still trying to get it done before December 31st. So I don't know. They're trying. I know. And so I gave them some of the, you'll see in your packet, I That's gave them some of the information. You're authorized to sign it so that you can just execute Yeah, if you're it. here, you can Thank get you. it done. 
um, because you get we don't on wish, as well. yeah. it, it's, <laughs> it's getting to be, it's, um, we're getting close. Yeah. Okay. What's happened is that the Department of Ag, a lot of the people have retired or left and it's, you know, it's a normal transition to the new, you know, administration. So, but it's, it's also COVID, you know, a lot of retirements have happened. And so there's just no staff and they're processing. That's why. Yeah, okay. everything is really backed up and uh, it's just a mess. There's like no nobody filling desks there. Anything else you want to hit on? No. Casey, do you have anything you want to? Do you have anything I else? Well, we're signing. Notes this time. Um, so we're following up on several things in the office. We have grant meeting because we're discussing another private sector grant that Alice found. Um, so Denise and Alice and I are going to sit down and talk about this. The I did notify Alice and Denise of this uh, mass historical grant opportunity. So we're going to talk about that. Um, I've signed the paperwork for the um, efficiency and regionalization grant um, and sent it off. I'm just waiting for them to tell me whether they want uh, wet signatures or not. Um, and I have to say- I guess this is a wet signature. Yeah. Yes. So I have to say we had so much help from Sean Cronin yeah. um, just finalizing that grant because we had applied for $200,000 and then we sat down the couple days before Thanksgiving, we sat down and talked to him and he's been so amazing. Um, I'll be really sad if he goes away because he's such a good advocate for towns. Yeah. And he's so willing to help. Yep. He is willing to help. And I think we should if if you don't mind just could you just put a little thank you letter together from mm -hmm. us because um you know we're we're going to nail them in january about uh hmm. school funding the school funding thing again you know trying to make it permanent so if he knows we appreciate his help maybe he will help us a little bit more we got to figure this out i'm i'm you know i'm wicked paranoid about it it's expensive. It's 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 a minimum of three hundred thousand dollars, I at least, and we and we can't afford to have that go away. Not go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need it to go away. No, I meant the yeah the waiver. The waiver. Yeah, we can't afford the waiver to go away. Right. No. Right. We need it to be permanent. Yeah. So ZBA put a limit on the number of concerts and the times of the concerts um, at Treehouse. So we, so we're gonna look at the opinion, but this was just a comment I got from one of the members, who just happens to have my cell phone number. <laughs> okay. So that was contemporaneous with this. That's yeah, sort of back to the treehouse thing. Good. Okay. So, so then it their know, request for their request for different hours is not impacted at all. So let if yeah I. Uh, the hours were on the concert time frames, not the pouring. So um, if they, if Treehouse wants to change their hours, all they have to do is the application paperwork and they can talk to Pat or Chris about it. Okay. Well, then it's actually a fairly simple process with ABCC considering some of the other ones we have. So what, what are the hours that? I don't know. That's what Damien needs to tell us. Okay. And actually, Chris and Pat um, corresponded via email about this, and the steps were outlined. So, you know, if David could certainly give us a call, I haven't talked to him for a while, so he could give me or Chris a call. Well, and Pat it's actually, um, I can't think of her name offhand, but I have a oh, um, the woman in yes, I can't remember her name either. I know her um, face. <laughs> It's like it's not Ashley or something, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. I gotta go look it up. But um, yeah, she she's the one that handles, she stopped in not too long ago. <clears throat> she's the one that handles all the licensing. So. Yeah, I think she stopped in when she was dropping her paperwork off. Okay. So I know Pat knows her face too. So I'll all have right. Pat and Chris work on it. Yep. Did you hear that? Tag, you're it. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll call. Oh shoot. 
<clears throat> I'll, um, Chris, I'll call with her number, okay? Her name. All right, is, thank you. I'm so, just blanking on her name right now. No, our next meetings are December 14th and the 28th. And those will be the last meetings of 2022. You, you know, um, you had to say that. Yep. I started doing some of the planning work with Brenda and Julie about scheduling. Yep. It's kind of scary to have to write 2023. Scheduling budget stuff. I don't, scheduling you know, budget I stuff. We need to get going on budgets. December, yep. so, freaking out. So, so okay. So budgets. we got to have to set some priorities I, at some point. I know we're really busy, but we need to set some priorities for what we're going to do in Boston. Mm -hmm. We we need to make sure that we're meeting with the other communities for the library grants. Okay. Okay. We have to. We have to make sure we're lobbying that whole money will be available in April or May. It's, mm -hmm. it's leftover money. And it seems like that's what they're doing is putting us into the potholes. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, you know, you know, the swing of the potholes. So, okay. Then we need to make sure everybody is lobbying for the same thing. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, so we have to have a meeting set up. We need to call Isabel. I know. And the MMA so that we can have a meeting of, of those 11 other communities besides us. You're talking about at the MMA at the conference. MMA conference. Yeah. yeah. Then we also need to have a meeting. I, I want us to have a meeting as a county, Selectman's Association. And then I also want us to have a meeting as Western Mass. Out there, you mean book two meetings out there? Okay. Yeah. Because we when are we meeting? Yeah. And, and, and the people are captured there. I know. So let's that's true. Let's just, you know. <laughs> Make it so you want me to get in touch with Isabel? Yeah. You make a reservation for Friday night too. Well, Friday night they're having the dinner. Right? Yeah, but we never go. And I so maybe go. we can we went last year. To the dinner? Yeah. The dinner. I don't think no, so. No, no we, we never did. did. Well, we didn't go last year. Last time we went. Yeah. 2020. And, who was it? Somebody was, was a, running chicken dinner. Come on. Oh, come on. No, everybody was this poor guy, I can't remember who it was, was up there and nobody would listen to him. It oh was, yeah, that was it wicked was, rude. It was that so was rude. rude. I was. Like, that's why I don't. I know. You people. It's, it's more productive to go as a group from our area. Here. Well, I thought we signed up for the dinner. I didn't. Mm -mm. I think Tim did. I, I did. yeah. Well, yeah, I signed up. I you know this is my make sure I'm leaving this radio. Sure well, well, now we need to make sure the out with our group. Well, I don't. Some you can never get some of the guys out, so we'll have to see. Uh, it's fine so, with me. I yeah. the guy. So I did put a bubbly anything. Casey, do you have more? I did forget something earlier during the select board announcements because I think we switched to, I don't know, health. We were talking about health. Yep. Um, I have reached out to Hamshaw Lumber. I think I may have sent emails to everybody, uh, but um, Lisa Mead has organized and eight, delineated a list of all the things that need to happen so that we can move ahead on the, the land swap. And um, I'm going to basically suggest that Doug Hamshaw and his, I don't know who Ken is, if that's his lawyer or uh, his son. Yeah, that we, um, maybe we just have a Zoom meeting saying, look, uh, Lisa Mead is gonna it's do this back. this this for us. This, these are all the steps that Lisa Mead has identified that need to happen. Right. Yep. It makes sense for her to prepare these documents and let your counsel review them. So she and I talked about that yeah. earlier. Okay. Um, there's Good. some steps that need to happen here. We need the survey from Randy mm -hmm. um, so she can review it. She's ready to prep purchase and sale right. documents. Yeah. And, and then she appraisal. needs to be able to talk to Doug yeah. Hamshaw's lawyer yeah, um, and get the two of them to go through the PNS documents. And um, in the meantime, us having a conversation about introducing engineers and stuff, I haven't heard back from Jeff Squire yet. Okay. I will go back and check my email, but I had sent him a draft contract and he had a couple of comments, but then we both had other questions we ended up asking each other. So um, the engineering piece being um, Leary lot, our piece that leads up to Hamshaw. Right, right. I mean, I'm just basically saying that our timeline in Hamshaw's could be totally different. And so right. I think it's, we need to have a it's, conversation. Yeah, it's that. basically a fantasy to think we're going to be building at the same time. So we need to figure out oh, right. ahead of time. Okay. Right. That's, but letting him know that we're progressing yep. is really important. Yeah, because that would be nice no, not to have to kind of deal with much of this these. beyond January of next year. Happy. 
So um, we do have some increases and in, it came up with capital. I've been working on capital. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to host for the eighth Carolyn because not everybody's available. So Mark Brennan and I are going to try to chat with each other. He's out of town at a funeral. So um, no, and, that's fine. And one thing I noticed, and Trevor, you can tell me if I'm wrong, the increase, there's a significant increase in the town common, correct? Well, if we, uh, well, the idea is that if we want to do the common, we need about 500,000 in, in funding to do like, the is it 500 or 800? I thought it was 500. So and I'll then, clarify that with then, Jeff because um, that was what Jeff and I were trying yeah, to Yeah, I think about. it was 500. And then that was what, you know, the, the state was willing to do, but we got to have that meeting. I don't know. Right. I know I'm we're trying still to, trying to nail I know it's hard to get everybody together. Um, Kevin needs to be there. And Chief needs I to be there. I talked to John and he's ready to be there. You need yep, to be there. I will. If I can't be there because we have interviews and stuff going yeah, on, we'll figure it out. We can do it. The three of you will tell me what happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yep. Um, the only other thing I wanted us to do to take an opportunity of is, um, you know, we're getting this Healthy Soils Award. Yes. So once we get the award, it's supposed to be this Friday. So the, on the 14th, we'll have a little ceremony here. Um, since I don't, know, I don't know, I'm not going to do that for big enough. But anyway, we we'll should we should have this on the 14th. Right. Um, so we were going to do it. What I wanted to do was to put together a letter to the Healy Driscoll transition team, climate group transition team, just saying that we have this award and we are hoping that they will fund, you know, MVP or, you know, further climate action. We'll come up with some stuff. And then, then I was hoping that we could do another letter to um, you know, their transition team about infrastructure and the lack of money that is coming out to Western Mass. And um, based on Suzanne Bump's uh, you know, report. And then, I don't know, it would be nice to have a, like a third letter to the transition team. And the idea, well, definitely about the libraries, if we, you know, to support, you know, the funding for the libraries. So that would be like three letters, but we need to we need the transition team to see that Deerfield has a profile in the state mm -hmm. as a leader. Because I had I a great think, meeting with Kim Driscoll. I don't know, you you and Kim was there too. Yeah, had a great and, meeting. She's great, and she seems really good. She was awesome. So let's let's build on that yep. and say, you know, so that they have a go to community in Western Mass, and we just sort of like build some rapport. Yeah, and I thought, you know, it, it's just it might it might generate some money for our campus, for the library, for you know, MVP program that has been underfunded. You know, it's like we were told it was going to get a hundred million dollars. It's still only twenty. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and you, you, it's the same amount of money when we were the first certified, and there was five, five towns. And now there's like 200 and something pounds. Same amount of money, though. Money. It's ridiculous. It doesn't even make sense. True. So there's a few things that, you know, she's promised us that they would not forget about Western Mass. So let's be the lead. Are these yeah. letters or whatever for the MMA conference? Or what are they for? Are they just well, to this is to the transition team right. right now. So send it now. That I'm just trying to clarify the timeline. Yeah, no, this is before the end of the year. So would it work if you worked with Chris or me? Yeah, I was to gonna draft, draft the some soil. if you can draft them, we can like yeah. yeah, and I can and actually Tim's if you send it to it's, me, I can always send it to Tim. Mm. We just build on a letter to her to the to we have to figure out which transition part of the transition team that library letter goes to. And then we talk about the infrastructure. How much has she published about her transition team? Because well, I, did produce, hear... I saw on Twitter, she had the list of all the people that were gonna be appointed. on this, appointed to the different things. I don't know if it was a complete list, but I she did point out the list. Climate change person and stuff because of my connections with NOFA and um, uh, you know the 
NRCS, mm -hmm. different ones that are already in, in MDAR have already sent in letters. And so I'm seeing some letters already. So I was just going to take some stuff from um, the, it's the Massachusetts um, Organic Farmers Association letter had an Audubon had sent mm -hmm. a letter. So I was just going to take some pieces of their letter about healthy soils and say, by the way, we, we got an award for it and we are the only one in the state that has a profile. And we it. really yeah. want you to um, fund this program and this is how we feel that you can help us. Let's do it. And okay. Then, and then Tim could get the letter to the library and get that on because clearly it's not going to be um, we're not going to get the money before Charlie Baker leaves. No. I mean, we were hoping to. But, no. um, so that that money is going to be pothole money is from her administration. Yeah. And then um, having no, I mean, we got to follow up on Suzanne Bump's report because it, I mean, it's our pictures I'm of gonna, our community. I'm entertain all yep. to adjourn. Yeah. And um, then we're going to do the gateway. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. And we have to do the gateway. No, we can do it anytime. Public... We'll, no, you can we'll, do it. We can do it together. together. Do it. All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we I, I, together. I'm not yeah, going to get home. I'm no, no, we'll help you here before yeah. we okay. go. But we'll do it. So all those, uh, you seconded? Yes. Oh, all those in favor. Tim Elche, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. I promise not to leave you high and dry. All right. Carolyn, that's aye. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night.